Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou. TKO'd. Knocked out. Or TKO'd. Knocked out. TKO'd. Technical knockout. Oh, well, knocked, knocked out. Um, Stipe Miocic in their second heavyweight bout over the weekend. UFC 260. And um, yeah, man. What an impressive performance. What an impressive, impressive performance. Um, I guess... On my side of things, what I mentioned previously with Brendan Shaw, I think I made a video on it actually on my YouTube, so definitely check that out. I think it's called um, "Is Brendan Shaw the Worst MMA Journalist of All or Analyst Something of All Time?" And I mentioned how interesting it was to hear loads of media and analysis and people who weren't giving Francis any chance because of how one-sided the first fight was, and because of how you know um, reckless and just you know shot heavy or knockout heavy or knockout dependent, right? Knockout dependent, whatever that, that term is, or how, you know, once, how basically um, the fact that Francis didn't really have a broad range of skills, it looked like. It looked like all he had was a knockout power on his fist, and that was about it. And the fact that, you know, um, Stipe Mjocic was able to display a full range, a full arsenal of, you know, mixed martial arts in terms of grappling, wrestling, uh, boxing, you know, all that good stuff to kind of um, keep Francis at bay and really win that first right pretty easily. And then after the fact, I think Francis then ended up losing against Derek Lewis on points, right? So there was a there was a time when it was starting to look like, oh, maybe this hype of Francis Ghana was a little bit um, premature. But it also made me think at the time that we've seen many accounts, especially as I mentioned it, that was the um, example of the Brian Ortega fight when after he lost to Max Holloway and then he came back from that fight and he looked a completely different fighter because he went back to the drawing board, was able to kind of be honest with the faults that he has, some holes in his games and just kind of improve in that short period of time. And what you've basically seen in my short time watching mixed martial arts or watching UFC specifically, there is kind of some fighters who are able to kind of take a loss and, you know, take it on the chin both publicly in person and privately and go back into the gym and basically work on their kind of errors and parts of their game that they're lacking in and there's a certain segment of fighters who just refuse to acknowledge that they made a mistake and kind of tell themselves that the other person landed a lucky hit they were injured um you know the weight cut was too was too hard whatever it may be whatever excuse that they can think of in order not to take accountability they'll find it but there, you know, there are two camps, and it did seem to me that Francis maybe did land in the first camp where he was going to be honest about, it, honest in himself, in knowing that he has the potential to be a world champion, but he has to fill these gaps in his skills in order to get to that next level. Because what we've seen so far, you can probably get by with what having your one thing if you want to get into the top ten, whether it's wrestling, jujitsu, striking. But the moment you want to get into a top five or you want to get into the conversation of having a belt, you just have to be well-rounded. There's nothing else. You can't do anything else. The sport now has gone, has developed too far. There are too many great athletes involved now, great martial artists in general, for you just to kind of be okay with just being a jiu-jitsu guy. You're not going to get as far as you would have got maybe a few years ago. Look at just someone like a Damien Meyer is a good example. You need to be a bit more well-rounded. Ben Askren suffered from that somewhat, especially towards the end of his career when he obviously the injuries caught up to him. And Francis Ngannou displayed that that was probably one of the most masterful um bits of performance we've ever seen from france especially when you consider how quick he comes out of the gates how he's always looking to take people's head off their shoulders he came out of that he came out from the first round patient calm waiting for his opportunity to strike he demonstrated that he has kicks now he went for a left i think uh, is it a head kick with his left foot i think sometime in the second round he was hitting with calf kicks just imagine what those tree trunks of legs must have felt like on um you know on stipe as he's getting cracked um he obviously showed he had a decent jab he was setting up um you know overhand rights and sneaky uppercuts he was able to stuff a takedown from stipe early on as well which was incredibly scary um stuff a takedown take his back and then unload a few hits as stipe is kind of pinned up against the side of the cage it was a very 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 great performance it really really demonstrated that this guy is definitely especially you know it's a shame that he's getting older and he's just doing i think he's like 35 or something francis and ghana if this would have happened maybe a, a couple of more years prior he could have had a very very long stint as a world champion 
um, at that weight class. It's just you don't really see anybody beating him, especially with the size difference, especially just with the power difference. And the fact that he's wrestling, he's grappling, and Jiu-Jitsu is only going to improve as time goes by. It's just a bit scary to see how much he can evolve and get better from this point. Um, it really was a masterful, masterful performance. But everything about it just made me happy to see. Um, he really deserved it as a fighter, I think, all things considered. I think there's some pictures here as well showing exactly how it going down. You're seeing Francis jabbing opponents. You know, Stephen Rush's face is just crumbling there under the pressure. I think this might have been the left that actually ended up flatlining Stipe, which probably was an error in his regard. I think he'd probably go back to drawing board and be a little bit gutted. I think he landed a right cross or something that stunned Ngannou a bit. Then um, Stipe got too excited and started to rush in. And as he rushed in, Ngannou hit him with a short. I think it was like a check hook even. It wasn't even, he didn't even wind up that much. And just that one hook connected in just the right spot and it completely flatlined um stipe he was already kind of dizzy from that moment onwards i think this is where the epic picture comes from of him kind of buckling under the weight and kind of bending backwards and then of course francis landed on you know a vicious hammer strike right at the end that to just finally seal the deal but honestly what an incredibly impressive performance man um no surprise really again like i said i think we should we should kind of get out of this idea that especially at this level when it gets to championship level fights it's very unlikely someone's going to get to the you know to the peak of the mountain discover that they're kind of lacking in some certain skills and then not go back to the drawing board and make the necessary changes in order to get them that belt because they also know what how much rides on that belt how different your life can change right we've seen with francis you know he won the belt and as soon as he won it, i've seen him get interviewed on podcasts he's on espn he's getting you know he's the coverage of him media wise has been incredible of course his english has improved too so that's kind of helping him you know be able to kind of get on a few more platforms but it completely changes your profile i think the belt in the ufc is similar to like a grammy right for musicians they always complain about it because they know the value that it brings monetarily uh branding wise and just perception wise right it just changes the conversation around you and your legacy instantly um instantly you know the the kind of lackluster performance against stipe instantly the lackluster performance against Derek lewis completely forgotten because he's won the belt now right and he's got a platform to kind of build upon he's shown us his skill set he's developed as a as an all-round fighter but naturally the most important thing is that he won in devastating fashion and with the belt that's what changes the entire conversation i'm sure it changes the prices that he commands in terms of fighting people it puts him in a very strong position in terms of deciding who he goes after next it validates the approach that his coaches did and kind of you know solidifies their position it really really changes the narrative completely um around him and his legacy and what it kind of will and what kind of it all accounts for when you know everything ends and he decides to hang up his gloves but like i said man masterful performance um i wasn't too surprised i generally did think if he was able to make the adjustments and improve his skill sets and kind of go and try to address some of his pain points especially in terms of preventing takedowns he had the ability to knock anybody out on their feet so if you're convinced that you are going to win against francis and Ghana by taking him down now you have another situation to deal with you have a whole other issue that you have to kind of wrangle with how do you prevent this guy from knocking your head off your shoulders but how do you also achieve your intention of getting him down taking him down on a single or double leg because it's not that easy Stipe is a big dude right and he looked tiny against Francis there he had like what 30 pounds on him or something I know Stipe leaned out a bit because of he went to you know aid himself in terms of movement whatever it may be but to me Ghana still just looks massive he just looks like an absolute beast so to think that someone like a John Jones can put on muscle in order to fight someone like a Francis and it makes sense that people actually give him a chance it does I think it goes it does show a respect for John John's skill set I think that's a good thing people really greatly um appreciate and acknowledge just how great and kind of you know goat level John Jones is in terms of what he can do in the octagon but from what we've seen so far especially what we saw of Israel and Jam and Yamba Blav Blavovich, 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 how you pronounce his name? My bad. Um, we did see sometimes size does matter. It really does, especially 
when the size difference is that great it just doesn't matter especially when you're fighting against somebody who can wrestle who can grapple it's just going to it's going to make a huge difference so if anybody thought that john jones putting on 30 pounds of muscle was going to make him more likely to knock out francis and Garner, this has definitely put a span in the works because what we saw was somebody that has the size has a power differential but also has addressed these weak points that's a very scary proposition for everybody involved in the heavyweight division a very very scary proposition